can help. Right. Um, so participating institutions agree to share aggregate patient counts from their electronic health record data in real time. And as Bill and Doug have explained, each network site should have the I2B2 software installed that connects to the EHR data repositories at each site. The I2B2 Workbench Query and Analysis Tools allows users to formulate research questions and obtain a patient count at their own local institution. These local I2B2 instances are linked by Shrine. This platform includes a web-based federated to query tool that allows researchers to construct those same research questions, but this time obtain real-time aggregate count across all of the network sites. Networks with national scope allows researchers um, the ability to access patient sets with regional diversity, helping clinical trial cohort discovery and determining study feasibility. It answers the key question of where can I find these patients and how many patients meet my study eligibility criteria. Last year, um, our team released a brand new Shrine interface that is currently supported on the production network. The older version of the I2B of the interface pictured here was derived from and closely resembles I2B2 code that is over 12 years old. When we started this project, our assumptions were that these new novice users would not be familiar with I2B2 and or raw EHR data. And in response, we wanted to build out a more intuitive, user-friendly interface that incorporated modern standards of design, usability, look and feel, and accessibility. We wanted to make sure we were selecting functionality that was the most valuable to novice users while supporting the use case of patient cohort discovery and study feasibility. And I just want to take a moment here to mention that the work we did not only not only includes the active software development phase, but also a phase of product discovery. The focus was on researching and defining the scope of the project to establish business goals, understand what a successful outcome would be, carry out user research, and understand the current market. Another goal that we had was to address the search for concepts. The ontology has over 2 million medical concepts and now contains a new COVID-19 addendum. Ontology boiled down to simplest terms, is a collection of medical terminology used in the diagnosis and treatment of patients, and it's how information is coded in the EHR. Standardized industry code lists help researchers locate the exact concept they were looking for, and we wanted to make sure they could do it quickly. But searching through 2 million codes can be overwhelming. We can appreciate the completeness of the ontology, but we wanted to make sure the search was robust to help researchers quickly locate that needle in the haystack. So this is a quick preview of the main tab of the new UI. Overall, our big goal here was to make sure that the UI was approachable. We um, took steps to avoid technical jargon. We scrubbed the UI to remove technical terminology like ontology, query, and Boolean logic. And I'll point this out more during the demo. Due to the pandemic last year, we were uniquely position to help facilitate urgent understanding of the natural course of COVID-19 and characterizations of the factors of disease severity and poor outcomes. A significant source of data for COVID-19 research is patient data that's captured in the EHRs. We have the infrastructure in place and it provides a unique real-time platform for conducting research on COVID-19 at an unprecedented national scale. To enable this work, we developed a specialized COVID-19 specific addendum to the existing ontology. This enables harmonizations of data elements that are critical to COVID-19 research, including new and existing terms and highlighting concepts of interest to COVID, to COVID and public health researchers. As always, we obfuscate the results to protect institution and individual privacy. In addition to the work our team released last summer, we also worked on a new 3.1 release. We added a few UI usability and enhancement features. Users now have a lot more flexibility in rearranging concepts and can now download a CSV of site count details. We've also incorporated two features that were in the legacy system. 
demographic distribution, and event-based queries. Demographic distributions, um, as we've rebranded breakdowns, allows users to stratify their query by age, sex, race, and vital status. We've replaced the individual site breakdown charts with four aggregate charts. Users can download site-specific data for further analysis. Event-based queries, as we're now calling temporal queries, allows users to create a sequence of events in a given patient timeline, where an event A occurs before an event B. We'll see all this play out in the demo. So for today's demo of 3.1 work, you will be seeing a production level data, so it's real data that's currently in our system. When we first log in, you'll notice that we have these three main tabs up here. Um, the goal was that we wanted the user to focus on the specific activity for that tab. The first tab, the Find Patients tab, the goal is for the user to build out their research criteria. The layout has three main panels, the medical concept list over here on the left where you can search for concepts, the define inclusion and exclusion criteria where you define the patient population, the user can also set date ranges and multiple occurrences, and down below you can search the network itself. The medical concept panel Notice we're not using the word ontology, but this is where a user can search and find concepts to build out their study criteria. We've streamlined the browse and search into one view and eliminated the need to switch between different screens and simplified by removing the extraneous fields. We created new root folders to list code domains to make the browse cleaner. Up here, you'll notice that COVID-19 folder that I mentioned. To browse, you can navigate to explore the codes manually and drill down, drill down to drag over containers or um, containing multiple concepts or individual concepts. For the search bar up here, you just enter in a string and an auto suggest list appears below and you can select the word of choice. The terms that appear here are whole words found in the ontology ranked by frequency of appearance. So you'll notice that the term diabetes appears about 1400 times, but the word diabetic about 800 times. So I'm going to go ahead and select diabetes. Um, I can go ahead and filter to view all my search results. By default, I am searching for all concepts, but I can filter by specific code domains to restrict it down to a set. For example, if I pick the ICD-10 procedure code set, so this is showing me in, in, um, that there, it's an incomplete search. I'm getting clear and immediate feedback on how to resolve it. Now I'm going to go back and look at all my results. You'll notice here that the tree automatically expanded to display all the matching leaves and folders. I can scroll or collapse these folders to view the codes I'm interested. And once I've located the concept of choice, I can just drag it over to this inclusion and exclusion panel. This verbiage um, inclusion exclusion panel is borrowed directly from clinicaltrials.gov. We really wanted to make sure we didn't use the word query in the tool itself. You'll notice when I dragged over this first concept, it automatically defaulted to an inclusion group and a second inactive group appears below. These groups are meant to serve as readable sentences combining the and or logical operator. This was another way of avoiding technical jargon and making it easier for users to understand what they are building. If the user wants an exclusion panel, they simply select without. Users can create complex queries without writing a single code of SQL. Over here, you'll notice that the domain category of this selected concept is displayed right here. It's a diagnosis code. I can also hover over this info icon to display the concept hierarchy path.
you notice that when I drag over concepts from different domains that it matches the, the, the code category matches it. So there's the user um, can remember where that concept is from. With this latest version of the ontology, we now include um, vital status and social determinants of health. For each panel, the user can specify date range and multiple occurrences. So I can select a date range that this event might have occurred 20 years ago. Once I'm ready um, with my query, I can go ahead and uh, create a new topic or select an existing topic. I can um, enter a name or auto generate name and I can go ahead and run the, run the query. One of the new features um, for the 3.1 release is the ability to rearrange these concepts in the panel. So if I want to create a new and logical group, I can simply drag and drop from a previous group instead of dragging from just the left-hand panel. Let me go ahead and simplify this query just so we can run something. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and count patients. So that's going to bring me to the view results tab. So while we wait for results, I'm going to draw your attention to this counter here. Um, it rolls up to the number of sites that successfully returned a count and it also displays a maximum upper boundary of patients you might find that fits this study criteria. Up here, I have a readable um, version of the criteria set. Um, I'll show a more complex one so you get a better uh, example of it. And down here below is the table of my site results. We alternate the colors so it's easy to parse the site and the site counts. I can sort by names or I can sort by um, status to find the largest number of patient cohorts. To the left, I have a previous results panel that displays a history of my previous queries. The rows that are in bold contain new data or unread, unread data, similar to how you might browse your email inbox for new messages. Once I view the counts, I may want to play around with the terms to assess the impact of the specific terms on the count, but I might not want to necessarily build out this entire query. Let's go to a previous example here. Um, in this example, you can see that my criteria set is a bit more complex. Um, I have patients, I have different concepts, multiple concepts in the first panel, and um, I have three um, adjoining panels. Um, instead of rebuilding out this entire query, I can click this edit criteria button and it'll allow me to reload that entire criteria set back into the find patients tab. Um, and then I can go ahead, change whatever concepts here. I can move this around um, and that would allow me to go ahead and again, rerun the query. Um, one of the things that I wanted to display here um, was this new concept that we have, which is including demographic distribution. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this as well. So I'm just running a query where um, find patients with a COVID-19 uh, you know, disease so I run this, and as this is running, um, they'll notice a demographic distribution. So this information is dynamically changing as the information is coming back from the server. So we have four aggregate cart charts. We have the demographic distribution by age, by sex, by race, and by vital status. Um, we also provided uh, the ability to download a site-specific demographic distribution, so this will give you breakdowns per site and allows the user to dive deeper and perform their own analysis and create charts that they can use. Up here, we have another CSV file for download. This time it contains the site data. This is the same layout that you see in this table down here. Now, before I switch over to event-based queries, I first want to highlight the difference between a normal query and an event-based one. So in this example here, I have three inclusion panels. The first panel contains multiple concepts to describe the age range of interest. The patients in the cohort must have had COVID 
and a diagnosis of diabetes. I could have specified a date range or multiple occurrence for the second or third panel. This criteria set is an example of a non-event query. I rerun this query, but this time defined concepts as an event-based query. My first panel still describes um, age ranges, but the second and third panel contain slightly different verbiage. The readable query format states a sequence of events for patients in this cohort, specifically to locate patients who had a diagnosis of diabetes, and I further specified a date range in the year 2000, happens before a COVID diagnosis. I'll go ahead and reload this criteria back to the Find Patients tab so you can see um, how we constructed it. The first thing you'll notice is this new radio button with this when option. This panel has a slightly different layout than the inclusion and exclusion uh, panel. And it also includes this clock icon to signal to the user that this is slightly different. For this event-based query, there's a limit of one event per query. On these other panels, you'll notice that the when button is actually disabled since I already have an active event-based panel. We also treat it with this yellow color to caution to the user it's a slightly different format. For an event panel, there's a maximum of two events and each event must contain at least one concept. If I delete this concept here, you'll see that the count button is disabled. I can add as many concepts as I want to each panel and they'll be treated as an or logical clause. I can specify a date range for each event but not multiple occurrences. We wanted the flow to continue to read from top to bottom. So find patients um, when the first occurrence of event one occurs before the first occurrence of event two. We've already built in the start and end point. The relationship between the events can uh, be fur can be further defined to define the timeline. For this example, I can specify that event one occurs um, with the gap of 14 days before the first or any of event two. This brings me to the end of the 3.1 demo. Thank you for your time and I'll take any questions. All right, thank you, Anupama, for showing us sort of the state of the Shrine software at this point up through the 3.1 release, which was uh, made available last month in May. And um, the demo that Anupama showed also showed the ACT ontology and data from the ACT network. In the upcoming hour, we'll be talking um, a little bit more generally and about how Shrine, some developments around Shrine and within Shrine that might be of interest to other networks or to other folks who are interested in exploring a shrine that haven't before.